Hello everyone, dear subscribers and viewers of the channel. Vitaly Sokolov is with you. In this video, we will try to figure out which programming languages are worth learning in 2023, as well as consider in which areas which languages will be most preferred. And before we start, subscribe to the channel so as not to miss new videos. If this video is helpful, please like it and leave a comment about it. Before proceeding to the choice of programming languages, I propose to trace the dynamics of changes in the rating of programming languages. There are many ratings and they are not perfect. For example, there is an index TIOBE. For calculations, Google, Bing, Yahoo, Wikipedia, Amazon, YouTube and Baidu search queries are taken. Although there are many more of them in the world. Requests are difficult to objectively calculate without unnecessary garbage and take into account not the number of requests, but the number of unique users. This can only partially indicate the relevance and part of the popularity of some languages. There are also some web hostings for programming projects that, based on the number of projects, calculate their rating of programming languages, for example, GitHub, GitHub services but even they cannot give the necessary and correct statistics. First, the number of users of different programming languages on different services can vary greatly. Secondly, many projects are generally closed and are stored on computers of various enterprises and not in repositories. And many programmers simply do not post their projects on the internet. The PYPL Popularity of Programming Language Index is a ranking of languages based on Google searches for programming textbooks. And due to this, it makes forecasts for the popularity of programming languages in the future. This approach is also very far from ideal, since it is difficult to calculate the number of real users for these queries, as well as take into account all variants of the required queries with correct and incorrect spelling in various spoken languages. There is also a spectrum.ieee.org rating and a number of forums and sites with their own indexes of programming languages. It is wrong to choose languages based on such ratings, but you can take into account the results of such ratings as an amendment and additional information when choosing languages. But, preferably, not one rating, but several with statistics over the past few years. In this video, we will take the TIOBE rating for the last year and a half as an example. And let's look at the dynamics of changes in it. I must say right away that I did not collect information for all months, but this is not particularly important, since we need this rating as an example. June 2021. The leaders of the rating are C, Python and Java which have a market share, according to the rating, of more than 10%, which is quite a lot in modern realities. Perl, Swift and the good old Fortran close the rating, which we will talk about later. At the same time, Python, C++ and Assembler show the largest share growth. At the same time, all languages have a share of more than 1% in the ranking. October was marked by the same three leaders, but the Python language came out on top. At the same time, Delphi gets into the rating, and Fortran rises even higher. The greatest growth is shown by two versions of Visual Basic, which is very controversial, and C hash. At the same time, the share of Delphi, which has just appeared in the top 20, is also growing rapidly. November was of little note in terms of shares and growth of languages. December 2021 summed up the year. The rating itself has changed little, but the shares of many languages have begun to decrease, and languages with a share of less than 1% are already in the top 20. Assembler and C++ show good growth, in addition to the usual languages. At the same time, Java and C are rapidly losing their share. February 2022 starts with a big drop in C and Groovy share. At Delphi, the share becomes less than 1%. March was marked by a drop in the share of C and Basic. April was marked by the appearance of Lua and Objective C in the ranking. At the same time, the share of C in Classic Visual Basic is falling, while Python, C hash, and C are actively growing. 
In June, the prologue language gets into the rating. In general, the situation has changed little. And Java, PHP and C are actively losing their share. Delphi, on the other hand, often ends up with positive share growth. In September, the share of C hash, Ruby, Visual Basic is actively falling, while that of Python, C++ and C is actively growing. In October, Python, C, Java and C++ break even further from the competition. Delphi is falling down the rankings and its share is already less than 1%. In November, with a share of more than 10%, there are no longer three, but four languages. Delphi is once again increasing its share. The Scratch language is also included in the rating. At C hash and basic, the share again actively falls. The current year ends with the fact that the same four languages are in the lead, but Java drops to fourth place. And about a third of the languages in the ranking with a share of less than 1%. And once again, the C hash language turns out to be the leader in losing its share, but at the same time being at the top of the table by the share itself. Based on the reviewed statistics, we can make a final table with average share values for languages. At the same time, for each language that is not included in the rating, we set the growth of the language to minus 0.1%. Based on the indicators, we can divide the languages into several colored sectors. The green sectors are for languages with a share above 5%. The yellow sector is for languages with a share of 1 to 5%. The orange zone is a share from 0.1% to 1%. And the dark orange sector is languages with a share of less than 0.1%. Let's also look at the average growth of languages over a year and a half. The most active growth was shown by Python, C++, C Sharp, despite the frequent loss of share, and Assembler. Most of the languages on average showed a drop in their share but Lua and Delphi still turned out to be in the black and increased their share. Summarize. If we focus on the TIOBE rating, then over a long period of time, absolutely all languages either increase or lose their share. And it makes no sense to draw conclusions in a short time. For example, the C-sharp language often turned out to be the fastest losing its share of the language, but in the end it took fifth place out of 25. The leading languages increase and lose the share most of all, while the languages at the bottom of the table gain and lose their share much more slowly. It is also worth noting that the number of programming languages is growing and the market share of languages is beginning to be split into smaller parts. This entails that many languages, instead of general application, begin to be used in some specific areas and sharpen to work in them. For this reason, it seems to some programmers that many languages, U200B, U200 bear already dead. But in fact they are being updated and are still used somewhere, they are just talked about less due to their scope. Now let's get to the main question. What languages should you learn in 2023? In programming, there is no single language that is better than others in everything or almost everything. Therefore, the language is selected based on various factors. Many languages can be used, if not for all tasks, then for very many, but comfort, development time, application speed, as well as the amount of information and ready-made language developments on the internet can vary greatly. If you want to develop games, then you can choose a language for a game engine that is convenient for you, the task of which is to simplify and speed up the development process. On the screen, you can see some of the game engines, the platforms they support, and the languages they use. You can develop games without programming, using game designers, but in this case your options will be much more limited. You can also create games without game engines and write everything from scratch in any full-fledged programming language. In this case, just choose the language that you like best and meets your requirements. If you plan to develop neural networks and train them, analyze data and automate production, you can also use many programming languages here, but most often they use those languages in which ready-made libraries have already been written and there are a number of necessary developments. For example, 
Python, C sharp, R, Perl, Go, Rust, C, Haskell, Java, Swift, Pascal languages, and many others are used in this area. And if you need a very fast program, then Fortran can help, which often overtakes even the C language in terms of speed. Many languages can also be used to work with databases, but most often they use those that already have a lot of libraries, components, and developments. For example, Python, C, C hash, R, Delphi, Java, Scala, Julia, and others. And they use SQL for queries. If you plan to program at a low level, develop operating systems, write drivers, programs, and algorithms, the work of which should be as fast as possible. You should pay attention to the languages Assembler, C, Forth, Kill, COBOL, Algol, Objective C, Pascal, Smalltalk, and, in some cases, even Fortran. And for system programming, you can use, for example, Perl and Rust. If you are planning to develop websites, web servers, services, applications, and cloud technologies, that knowledge of any one language, most likely, will not be enough. Look at job ads and see what languages are required for employment in a particular company. Therefore, be prepared to learn several programming languages at once. For example, Python, Java, JavaScript, PHP, Ruby, R, Perl, Go, Rust, C hash, Delphi or Lazarus, Free Pascal and others. To develop applications for Android, you can use Java, Kotlin, Swift, Delphi, Lazarus, Free Pascal, Dart, Python and some others that have support for this platform. When developing applications for iOS and MacOS, you can pay attention to Swift or Objective-C. Although, if desired, you can use other languages that have support for these platforms. For example, C, C++, Delphi, Free Pascal, and so on. As learning languages, you can use Pascal family languages. For example, Delphi, Free Pascal, PascalABC.net and others, as well as Python, Scratch and the like. In robotics and programming for microcontrollers, you can use Assembler, C, C++, MicroPascal, Pascal, Basic, Flowcode, Scrata, Python and others. Many languages can also be used in banking and commercial business projects. Often used Java, C hash, Lua, Python, MATLAB, Go, Ruby, PHP. But others can be used as well. For writing macros, Visual Basic or Rust is quite suitable. In science, languages are selected for specific tasks, so you can find a variety of programming languages. If you need to work with huge data and calculations with great accuracy, you can use Python, Fortran, PascalABC.net, MATLAB, Prolog, C, C hash, Free Pascal, and others. Sometimes even different game engines are used to simulate different situations. If you need a universal language for general use for various tasks with support for many platforms, you can use languages that work through the Java virtual machine, such as Java, Scala, Groovy, Free Pascal, Kotlin, Basic, and others. Or .NET languages, such as C hash, Java, Pascal ABC.net, Python, and others. In addition, there are a number of languages and environments that have compilers that support development for many platforms, such as Delphi, Free Pascal, C, C, Free Basic, Pure Basic, and others. As you understand, the same languages can be used for a variety of tasks. The only question is convenience, licenses, the number of useful libraries, ready-made developments, educational literature, the implemented support for certain platforms and architectures. Otherwise, you will have to program the necessary feature yourself, as well as the speed of work. Therefore, 
Keep an eye on vacancies in those regions and countries where you plan to work and see what kind of competition, salary and what requirements are placed on options that are interesting to you. And to find jobs in some languages, you may have to visit companies in person or send your resume to various companies that use the language you want. Especially in the case of choosing languages for which there will be few vacancies on the job boards. You can also ask about working in various groups on social networks in the desired programming language. In the same place, you can try to assemble your team to write some projects. You can earn on various freelance services, take orders there and complete them for money on time. There are times when the customer does not care what language the desired project will be written in. It is important for him that the project has a certain functionality and meets the established requirements for it. Or you can even work for yourself. Engage customers through ads, your social media groups, your YouTube channel, or purchasable ads by offering your programming services. Or you can write small projects and post them on various trading platforms. You can also create free projects and earn on advertising, purchases or interest on transfers within them, or you can collect donations for the development of your projects. That is, there are many options to make money in any programming language. Do not be afraid to make a choice in favor of certain languages. Firstly, many languages are very similar to each other and it may take you less time to master new languages than the first one. Secondly, do not be afraid that the chosen language will die quickly. Of course, it may lose popularity, be used less often, or go into some narrow areas of application, which may complicate the job search in the future. But if you choose some popular language from the top 20 TOP 50 of various ratings or those that are often mentioned on the internet, on which there are still YouTube channels, groups and sites, then the probability of its death in the next 10 to 30 years will be minimal. Since the projects written on it will still require support for some time, expanding features, fixing bugs, flaws, and so on. Many languages that are more than 50 years old are still alive. And they are not just alive, but continue to develop. They still have their audience and are used in various fields. Many languages add support for .NET, the Java virtual machine, or their own implementation of support for popular operating systems and features. Due to this, the line between various popular languages is gradually blurred and they develop, including at the expense of each other. If you already know some programming language, it may make sense to develop further in it and the languages of its family. Therefore, choose which area of programming is closer to you, which style of programming and language, Look at the situation with work and opportunities in your area of residence and make a decision based on your thoughts. And the advice of various programmers on the internet is just additional food for thought when making a decision. The decision is made by you personally and the consequences of the decision will be in your life. A programming language is a tool and can be used in many different ways. Nevertheless, something with this tool can be done more conveniently and something, vice versa. If desired, even dead languages can be given a second life, if you continue to develop, popularize and use it. That's all for me. Hope this video was helpful for you. If so, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and write a comment with your opinion on this topic. Financial support can be provided to the channel using the details in the description under the video. Your support is very important. Thank you all in advance. Vitaly Sokolov was with you. Bye everyone. Good luck in choosing a programming language and finding a job in it. And see you in new videos.